our Vienna office, and her name is Isabella, and she's taking care of media relations. And we also have her contact. Um, I have business cards of her, so if you want your contact details, I'm happy to give them to you afterwards, or you can also always get in touch with um, Christina here at the uh, tourist office in Delhi. Um, well, I want to start with our statistics from last year, which were just published two weeks ago, and uh, in Vienna itself. Uh, we had a new record in 2014 in terms of overnights and arrivals. So in 2014, uh, we reached finally the 13 million uh, overnights uh, mark, so to say. So we had 13.5 million overnights, which is a plus of 6.3 percent compared to 2013, and 6.2 million arrivals, which is plus 6.4 percent compared to 2013. Our top 10 markets, as you can see, Germany, then Austria, so everybody coming from the rest of the country to Vienna. Uh, the US, Italy, Russia, uh, unfortunately, um, <coughs> the numbers decreased last year. Great Britain, Switzerland, Spain, France, and Japan. And in terms of India, it was ranked number 40. Uh, but uh, also very good news and really happy. As you can see, we had an increase of 18.4% in overnights compared to 2013. And uh, our goal until 2017 is to reach the 100,000 overnights from India. Um, just a general information about Vienna, um, well, it's the capital of Austria, we have 1.7 million inhabitants and uh, we call ourselves, ourselves uh, the historic melting point in the heart of Europe because we have 800 years of Habsburg history, so the Habsburg ruled uh, Austria and uh, also Hungary over 800 years. Uh, our location is quite convenient for combined trips, so we are close to Bratislava, Budapest and Prague, so it's very easy to travel around. And uh, there is the river Danube flowing through Vienna, so it's very popular at the moment uh, that you do a river cruise. So you can start in Germany, uh, uh, go down uh, to Austria and um, end in Budapest, in Hungary or at the Black Sea. And we are also very proud that again in 2014 we were voted most livable city by the Mercer study. Um, as Tina already mentioned, there is one international airport which is Vienna Schwächer. It's located about 30 minutes from the city center. And uh, there are daily direct flights from Delhi operated by Austrian Airlines, uh, but um, also stop over flights from Delhi and Mumbai with Lufthansa, <coughs> Turkish, Etihad and Emirate Airways. So in total, we have about 2,300 direct flights to Vienna from 60 countries served by 55 airlines. And once you arrive in Vienna, very easy to go into the city is to take the CAT, the city airport train, and it takes you in 60 minutes from the airport to the city center, and when you're going back to the airport, you can already check in your luggage in the city center, and then they take care of the luggage that is taken to the right plane, hopefully. So when you are in Austria or in Europe already, uh, we have a new main train station which was just opened in December 2014 and it's very easy to travel around with the train in Europe and in Austria. So there is the ÖVB, which are the Austrian Federal Railways, and they have a new high-speed train, the Railjet. They have a bit first a business and an economy class and an onboard restaurant. And as you can see, uh, coming from Salzburg, Graz, or even Budapest, uh, it takes you about 2.5 hours to Vienna, and also from Innsbruck, Munich, and Prague to Vienna, it's about 4 hours. So it's more convenient uh, to take the train rather than going to the airport, where you have to be 2 hours prior, and then you have to wait, and then you have to go from the airport back to the city, so traveling with the train is actually a good alternative uh, to taking flights. And in Vienna, we have the Vienna card. Um, it's either uh, available for 48 hours or 72 hours, and you can use all public transportation in Vienna. Plus, you get reduced entrance fees um, to over 210 museums, attractions, restaurants, exhibitions, and other sites. You can purchase it online, uh, you get a voucher, and you can exchange that in Vienna for the Vienna card, or you can buy it at over 250 hotels in Vienna, at the airport, at travel agencies, and at also at our tourist information office in the city center. Uh, also brand new is now the Vienna Card Affiliate Program and uh, this is a marketing initiative where you can offer your internet visitors the Vienna Card and earn uh, money easily with your website or with your blog. So we are providing advertising packages and uh, you just put 
the banner on your website, on your, on your blog, for example, and then uh, once a visitor clicks on that banner, he or she is redirected to the Vienna Card website, and when he or she buys it, you earn a commission with it. So we try to increase sale for them. Uh, of the Vienna card as well uh, in this way. So what's happening this year? In 2015 we are actually celebrating 150 years of the Ringstrasse and we call the Ringstrasse or the Ring Street Ring Boulevard the most beautiful uh, boulevard in the world. The Ringstrasse used to be the city walls and in 1856 Emperor Franz Joseph decided it is time to open up the city center to destroy the city walls and to include all the suburban area to the city center life, so to say. Um, so the city walls were destroyed and it was at that time Europe's biggest construction site, 2.4 million square meters. And uh, a lot of financiers, patrons of the art and also Jewish citizens built really beautiful palaces along uh, that area, which you can still <coughs> see today and that's, what, uh, that's why we also call the Ringstrasse uh, the biggest open air museum. Um, officially it was opened on May 1st, 1865, but it took a total of about 50 years to build the Ringstrasse as it is nowadays. In, we, in Vienna we call it the Ring, and it's 5.3 kilometers long and 57 meters wide. And uh, for tourists we have the Vienna Ring Tram, which is an old tramway that travels the entire Ring Street in 25 minutes, and you get explanations in several languages via headphones to all the buildings and sites that you see along the Ringstrasse. As mentioned, at the Ringstrasse there are our most important public buildings, for example the State Opera, the Imperial Palace, the Kunsthistorisches Museum, which is, which is the Museum of Fine Arts, the Museum of Natural History, Parliament, the Vienna City Hall, and the University of Vienna. And there will be several ex exhibitions and events going on uh, all the year round. Uh, and also special tours are offered, for example you can do a Ring Street tour um, focusing on the coffee houses that are along the Ringstrasse or uh, focusing on Viennese cuisine or for example at the Natural History Museum you can climb up to the roof which normally is close to the public and you can have a look down at the city center and the Ringstrasse. And also another university, uh, another anniversary this year, we celebrate 650 years of the University of Vienna. Here you can see a map of the Ringstrasse, so it's really circling the city center with all the big build buildings around. And uh, there are also a lot of parks and a lot of green spaces along the Ringstrasse. The city park, the court garden, the people's garden, the city hall park. And that brings me to the next topic. Uh, Vienna uh, is a city which has a lot of <coughs> urban and green space balance. <coughs> In Vienna we have over 280 imperial parks and gardens and uh, all those green spaces take up more than half of the city's area. Furthermore we have the Prater, which is on the one side um, a very old amusement park with a giant ferris wheel, which you might know, but it's also a 6 million square meters recreation area with woods, with lakes where you can swim in, with different sports facilities and uh, meadows and ponds, so very popular on the weekends when the weather is nice. Uh, Viennese really love to go to the Prater and do some sports. Furthermore, I mentioned before that the river Danube is flowing through Vienna and there is also the Danube Island, which is a 21 kilometer long island. You have on the one side sandy beaches, also very popular for doing sports, but you also have an area where you have a lot of restaurants and bars, so that gives you really a Mediterranean feeling in, during summer times. Vienna is surrounded by the Vienna Woods, which is an UNESCO park and it's one of the most diverse forests in Austria and there are also a lot of hiking routes. For example, there is the, we call it the Rundumadum Trail, so that's a hiking trail that goes around the city. Um, it's 120 kilometers long and uh, yeah, each day you can do a different part of the hiking trail, for example. And if you feel a sore of all the sightseeing and all the hiking, then you can check out Europe's largest city spa, which we just opened two years ago, the Terneville which is a thermal bath in Vienna. And we also use the, um, the fact that Vienna is a very green city to do marketing with it. So here you can see a picture of the Danube, for example. Furthermore, Vienna is also a very romantic city, especially the narrow streets in the city center, or if you're on a honeymoon or an anniversary, for example, you can take a ride with the horse-drawn carriages, which we call Fiaka in German. Uh, you can have dinner at the giant ferris wheel, 
uh, you can do a boat trip, which you just saw in the picture before, and the old Danube. And also, very new since last year, in our palace, Schönbrunn Palace, there's now a suite where you can actually sleep in. So it's really sleeping in the palace. It's a two-bedroom suite, and uh, it has two bedrooms, a kitchen, a big living room, and there are several honeymoon packages available. For example, you can get a butler who cooks dinner for you, who takes care of you. So it's a very unique experience, really sleeping in the palace. So once they close at 6 in the evening, you are there on your own. Of course, uh, there is somebody in a hotel next to the palace uh, that takes care of you if you need anything. But in general, yeah, you're on your own in the old palace. Vienna is also very popular for families uh, at Schönbrunn Palace. There is also a, a huge garden, a palace park with a maze. And we also have Europe's oldest zoo, Schönbrunn uh, Zoo. There is also a children's museum, a puppet theater, and there are also special guided tours for children and, and for families in the palace itself. I already mentioned the Prat Amusement Park, where you have also roller coasters and the giant Ferris wheel. Um, there is a children's museum at the museum's quarter, which is Europe's largest cultural complex, um, where you can find 10 different museums. There is a children's farm and also an indoor family fun adventure park. We have two incoming tour operators that are focusing uh, very much on the Indian market, uh, Pegasus, the welcoming agencies, and they are also offering different packages. For example, Vienna for families, so really itineraries that serve to families. Um, it's a three-night stay in Vienna. Or you can experience the beauty of Vienna's Linkstrasse during your three nights for culinary Vienna. And Eurotour is there offering, for example, a city break uh, of six nights. But Vienna is not all about green and uh, families and romance. So Vienna is also full of culture. So here you can see the inside of the Vienna State Opera. And as we also did with the um, fact that Vienna is a green city, we also put it with our cultural heritage, we use it for marketing uh, purposes. Vienna is also great for shopping, so you have several shopping areas. Since two years there is the Golden Quarter in the city center, which is a high-end shopping area where you have the biggest Louis Vuitton store in Europe, Prada, Vivian Westwood. There is a brand new Park Hyatt Hotel that opened up last summer. So um, shopping is also very popular in Vienna. Plus you also have a lot of those traditional Viennese manufacturers around there and uh, where you can, for example, get uh, your special hat or they really do the shoes <coughs> according, to your foot, uh, according to your foot. And um, in addition, you might have heard of the Viennese cuisine. Uh, so that's the only cuisine in the world that is named after a city. Uh, but on the other hand, there's also a lot of Indian restaurants in Vienna. So if you really want to um, try or stick to the Indian cuisine, that's no problem at all. Uh, but of course, we encourage people to taste our sweets, as you can see here, the Google book and the Sahar cake, which might be more uh, known. And um, also, nightlife is very great in Vienna especially for young people. In the last years, a lot of things um, came up. A lot of young festivals are going on. But also, um, there are each night classical music concerts that you can attend to. Of course, there is the Vienna State Opera, which plays each night different operas. And there are also a lot of theaters, cinemas, anything that you're looking for. And then, last but not least, Vienna is very interior, of course. 800 years of Habsburg history and uh, a lot of palaces and a lot of uh, imperial buildings, so to say. And uh, yeah, this leaves me to say at this very moment a group of people is traveling back in time. So when will you take your trip to Vienna? Thank you very much and I would like to call my colleague um, Clemens to the stage and he will be re representing the Science School Tourist Office. Thank you.